We all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First item on the agenda tonight is to consider and act upon the self-supporting funds in the amount of $5,533,330. For the Water Pollution Control Authority for the fiscal year July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2017. May I have a motion to approve. Moved by Representative McCullough, seconded by Representative Dean. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, any discussion from the public? Back to the body. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Item carries unanimously. Item number three, to consider and act upon the proposed appropriations in the amount of $293,510,143 for the fiscal year of July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2017 as recommended by the Board of Finance for any lawful purpose. The total of the proposed budget as, approved by the, as approved by the Board of Finance is as follows. Board of Finance recommended budget, 293 million five hundred and ten thousand one hundred and forty three dollars less non-current tax year revenue twenty six million six hundred ninety six dollars six hundred ninety six four twenty net revenue to be raised by current year tax set takes taxation two six six eight one three seven two three plus senior tax relief four million one hundred eighty three thousand one hundred and forty four Plus reserve for unallocated taxes and other credits, four million seven hundred twenty-six thousand nine hundred thirty-five gross amount to be raised by tax taxation two seven five seven two three eight zero two. Moved by Representative Hurley, seconded by Representative McCarthy. Is there any discussion on this item, Representative? <coughs> um, oh, we had a rules issue that I need to bring up, I'm sorry. Um, Representative Pierce and Representative McCarthy had asked, approached me to ask for a suspension of the rules. Yeah. Representative McCarthy, District 7. Representative Phil Piers, District 4. Uh, motion to uh, suspend the Rule 26 uh, off rules to regulate to, to allow for uh, unlimited caucus over the course of the evening. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the item? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Thank you. Sorry, back to the main motion that we were discussing earlier, which was moved and seconded. Um, Representative Hurley. Um, good evening. I'm Michael Hurley, RTM District 10, Southport. I think most people in this room understand that given the fiscal challenges in Hartford, that there really are no easy answers for this year's budget. It is the, and I will be speaking on behalf of the Republicans um, during my comments this, this, this evening. Um, it's the RTM Republicans' position that Hartford should fully restore the $3.6 million education cost-sharing grant to Fairfield. And while I won't speak for the Democrats, I, I do know that they share a similar passion to seeing these monies restored for education. Not only is it the right thing for our schools, but it also begs the, the question of basic fairness. 
we have many blessings in our town of Fairfield, and we understand that there's a need for each of us to pay our fair share of taxes. But as BOF Chairman Tom Flynn noted at our last RTM meeting, for every, and, and these are approximations, for every $100 that Fairfielders pay in state income taxes, we only get back about $5. And there are some in the state who think that we should even get back less than that. Um, I don't think that's fair, and the RTM Republican Caucus does not think that that's fair either. There's currently a few plans up in Hartford that address the budget. There's one from the minority party, which aims to right track Hartford, Hartford and to fully restore the education cost sharing grant to Fairfield. It, it, it's not a perfect plan by any, any means. No plan is, is totally perfect. But it does aim to restore the education cost sharing money. I think tonight we really need to try and come together, put aside politics, come together as Fairfielders. I know we're Republicans and Democrats, but I think we need to send a clear message to Hartford that we pay our fair share of taxes and we do not want to see Hartford's problems solved on the backs of Fairfielders. So tonight I'm, I'm very pleased to share that the RTM Republican majority is fully prepared to support both the education and the town budget in their entireties without any reductions. And we're hoping that our colleagues from the other side of the aisle will join us. We've already heard reports of some projected surpluses on the town and the education side. And if we don't, at the end of the day, get the full restoration from Harford from when they may pass the budget, which may be in June, maybe in July, could be August. I've even heard some press reports that it may not be until September. We're confident that Mike Tetro, working with the department heads, and the chairman of the Board of Education, Phil Dwyer, would be able to come up with a plan to mitigate any impact. So he here's our ask. We're asking our colleagues on the other side of the aisle to join us tonight in a bipartisan fashion and to support our education and town budgets as presented. Let's join together with a resounding yes tonight to our leaders in Hartford that we will accept nothing less than a full restoration of the education cost sharing grant to Fairfield. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Representative Farnan. Brian Farnan, District 9. Originally, I was behind the idea of delaying this vote, hoping for clarity from Hartford. However, with the Board of Finance making it clear that a mill increase was off the table, and with no end in sight coming from Hartford, I believe voting for the budget as is is the right thing to do. Moreover, a delay likely will ensure the potential likely increase in a cut to education and sends the wrong message to Hartford that the education cuts coming from Hartford are okay and we can handle them. Uh, for somebody like me who has never, never voted for an education cut, I can't delay. Simply put, a vote to delay is a vote to cut education. And I ask you to join me and support education and vote for the budget as is tonight. Thank you. Representative Piers, District 4. I want to start by saying that our caucus has not, never supported an education cut. Postponing tonight does not mean we're cutting anything. A vote to postpone tonight would mean that we leave open the option of using a potential tax increase to mitigate any possible reduction in state aid from the state. That's a possibility. It's not on a postponement, it's on the budget. I understand. I, I'm, speaking to the budget before us. Um, we cannot pass a budget without knowing the amount of state aid that we're going to receive. We would be abdicating our responsibility as um, elected officials by passing a budget on incomplete information. The potential um, cut in state aid, we all support maximizing the amount of state aid coming to Fairfield. That's not the issue. The issue is whether or not we want to lock ourselves in to a budget tonight 
um, which will lock in a tax rate for this town, which will prevent us from mitigating any loss of services that we will suffer. I want to be clear that a vote tonight for the budget is going to mean a loss of services for our town, even if we all vote for the budget. And if the vo budget is voted on tonight, our caucus intends to support the budget in its entirety, town and board of ed. That's not the issue before us tonight. Um, so in light of that, Madam Moderator, I believe that the pending resolution cannot be resolved until the body receives further information regarding cuts in state funding. I therefore move that when this meeting adjourns, it adjourned to meet in connection with our next regular monthly meeting to be held on May 23rd, 2016 at 8 p.m. So you're asking for a suspension of the rules to um, fix to a state certain? Uh, no, no, Madam Moderator. I believe your motion was to fix the time to which to, ad to adjourn, is that correct? I believe that's correct. Okay, in order to fix the time to adjourn, you need a motion to suspend the rules. I will cite Rule 36. If not waived, any item not completed or voted upon at any scheduled meeting shall be continued to the next day at the same place and starting time. That's rule 36. I will now cite the charter. The charter says, Article 12, date of the annual budget meeting. The RTM shall hold the annual budget meeting on the first Monday of May each year. You are asking us to suspend both of those things. Those according to Robert's rules, chapter seven, section 22, fix the time to which to adjourn. A motion to fix the time to which to adjourn is in order only at the time it is offered if there is no meeting scheduled for later within the meeting. If there is such a meeting, additional meetings within the same session may be set by a motion either to suspend the rules or to amend something previously adopted, namely the previous adopted agenda or the program in session. Therefore, I'm not stopping you from postponing the meeting, sir. I'm just asking that first we need a motion to suspend the rules. And if you'd like to make that motion, Go, please go right ahead. Through you, Madam Moderator, to the town attorney, I'd like clarification on whether such a motion is required under our charter and our rules to regulate a legal opinion from the town attorney. I'm citing Robert's rules, the charter, and our rules to regulate. If you wish to challenge my ruling, you may. Through, through you, Madam Moderator, um, I have a question for the town attorney on whether or not it's legally required to do that under the charter and our rules to regulate. Mr. Lesser. I don't believe that you need to suspend the rules to do this. Your rules provide that you follow Robert's Rules of Order. Robert's Rules of Order allows you to make a motion to fix a time to which to adjourn. That means to continue this session. That meeting can, it's not debatable and it uh, requires a majority vote. So he's made a motion. If there's a second, you can vote on the motion. I don't believe it needs to have the rules suspended. Actually, my ruling is that it does. And I stand by section 22, fix the time to which to adjourn. A motion to fix the time to which to adjourn is in order only at the time is it offered. There is no meeting scheduled for later within the same session. If there is such a meeting, additional meetings within the same session may be set by a motion either to suspend the rules or to amend something previously adopted, namely the previously adopted agenda for the program for the session. If you wish to object to my ruling, you may. Under Robert's Rules of Order, you can continue this meeting tonight until the next meeting, which would be the regularly scheduled meeting for May 23rd. You cannot continue it past that meeting. So under Robert's Rules, you could pass a motion to fix a time to which to adjourn and have it be any time up to that. So if you follow Robert's Rules, then that motion is in order and it's a proper motion. It is not a proper motion, Attorney Lesser. 
We need a motion to suspend the rules. If you wish to issue a challenge, you may. Uh, Madam moderator, I appeal the ruling to the body. Okay, we will now hear a debate on this from the body. If you wish to speak to it, you may. The motion will be to overturn the ruling of the moderator. Seeing no debate, the clerk will please call the roll. The motion is to The motion is to overrule the ruling of the moderator. Do you need a mic? Okay, the clerk will call the roll. Pete Ambrose? No. Ed Bateson? No. Mary McCulloch? No. Pete Varian? No. Bill Gerber? Yes. Tim Lynch? No. Eric Newman? Yes. Cindy Perham? Yes. Heather Dean? Yes. Alex Durrell? No. Alexis Harrison? No. Robin Horace? No. Julie Gottlieb? Yes. Jen Hockberg? Yes. Phil Pierce? Yes. Liz Zesma? Yes. Josh Garskoff? Yes. Ruth Smay? Uh, yes. Jay Wolf? Yes. Matt Ambrose? Yes. Hannah Gale? Yes. Ray Newberger? No. Janice Solomon? Yes. Tom McCarthy? No. Mark McDermott? Yes. Jill Bergara? Yes. Karen Wackerman? Yes. Hank Behrens? No. Pamela Iacona? No. Christine Messina? No. Pete Tolman? No. Brian Farnan? No. Yes. Drew Georgiatis? Yes. Ken Lee? Yes. Bill Perugini? No. Sam Cargill? No. Michael Hurley? No. Eric Sunman? No. <clears throat> no comment before the vote is called. Tie vote, the motion fails. If I. <coughs> We are back to the main motion, which is discussion on the budget. Anybody else who wishes to discuss the budget? Representative Pierce. Madam Moderator, in light of your ruling, which was sustained by the body, I therefore make that motion that Madam Moderator ruled was proper, which is to suspend the rules to allow us to adjourn um, to the May, adjourn this meeting to be, so that when we adjourn, we will hold it on the May 23rd 2016 regular meeting of the RTM. Is there a second? Seconded by Representative Dean. Any discussion? No, no, because we're, yeah, okay. Um, will the clerk please call the roll? So the motion is to, in favor of suspending the rules to allow for a postponement. Everybody clear? All right. All those in favor? Uh, Representative. Gerber, you have a point of information? Yes, this is a motion to suspend the rules. All right. Will the clerk please call the roll? Peter Ambrose? No. Ed Bateson? No. Mary McCullough? No. Keith Barron? No. Bill Gerber? Yes. Tim Lynch? Eric Newman? Yes. Cindy Perham? Yes. Heather Dean? Yes. Alex Durrell? No. Alexis Harrison? Yes. Robin Orris? No. Julie Gottlieb? Yes. Jen Hockford? Yes. Bill Pierce? Yes. Liz Esma? Yes. Josh Garskoff? Yes. Ruth Smay? Yes. Yes. Jay Wolf? Yes. Matt Ambrose? Yes. Hannah Gale? Yes. Ray Newberger? No. Janice Solomon? Yes. Tom McCarthy? No. Mark McDermott? Yes. Jill Bergara? Yes. Karen Wackerman? Yes. Hank Barron? No. Pam Iacono? No. Christine Messina? No. Pete Tallman? No. Brian Farnan? No. Joe Georgiatis? Yes. Ken Lee? Yes. Bill Perugini? No. Sam Cargill? No. Michael Hurley? No. Eric Sunman? No. That's a tie vote again. The motion fails. We will now act upon the budget. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, any comments from the public? Back to the body. All those in favor? We'll call, do, all those that can we do it? 
a voice vote on this? Now I'll call, I'll call the vote. Will the clerk please call the vote? The vote is now whether or not to approve the budget. Go ahead. What? No. Pete Ambrose. Yes. Ed Bateson. Yes. Mary McCullough. Yes. Kate Varian. Yes. Bill Gerber. Yes. Tim Lynch. Yes. Eric Newman. Yes. Cindy Perham. Yes. Heather Dean. Yes. Alex Durrell. Yes. Alexis Harrison. Yes. Robin Orris. Yes. Julie Gottlieb. Yes. Jennifer Hockberg. Yes. Bill Pierce. Yes. Liz Esma. Yes. Josh Garsko. Yes. Ruth Smay. Yes. Jay Wolf. Yes. Matt Ambrose. Yes. Hannah Gale. Yes. Ray Newberger. Yes. Janice Solomon. Yes. Tom McCarthy. Yes. Mark McDermott. Yes. Jill Vergara. Yes. Karen Wackerman. Yes. Hank Barron. Yes. Pam Iacono. Yes. Christine Messina. Yes. Peter Tolman. Yes. Brian Farnan. Yes. Drew Georgiatis. Yes. Ken Lee. Yes. Bill Perugini. Yes. Sam Cargill. Yes. Michael Hurley. Yes. Eric Sundman. Yes. The item passes unanimously. Thank you very much for your, all your time this evening. Thank you all to the department heads and to the Board of Education and the superintendent for working so hard on your budget. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I already did it. Moved by Representative Orris, Representative Carell. We stand in adjournment. Thank you.